welcome to sunny downtown Amsterdam. That's the famous uh, Skinny Bridge in the heart of the Old Quarter. And we're here for one of the most unusual events in the whole European athletic calendar, a competition to find Europe's strongest man. And believe me, it's no competition for 19 stone weaklings. We've got eight challengers drawn from six countries, all of them men of enormous physique with legs like telegraph poles and chest like a barn door. And literally, when they come through a doorway, the room suddenly goes darker. The extraordinary thing is that even these men of steel can be reduced to near exhaustion in about a minute and a half flat by some of the events they have to compete in. Lifting logs, bending steel bars, towing a seven and a half ton truck. So eight challenges then, competing in eight events over two days, and the first event is the log lift. Hordes of cameramen here from the local press, and the first man to go is Gino Bultink from Belgium. He is, if you like, the squarest man in the competition, five feet ten tall and 360 pounds. The rules of this event are the log has to be held overhead in the locked elbow position for two seconds. Any technique is acceptable, no limit to the number of attempts. You know, Bultink made that particular lift, but he went out at the next one. And it's now Franzi Birbaum's turn to go at 120 kilos. He's the rock lifting champion from Austria. He hasn't competed in this event before, but he's a great trier. They call him here the laughing Austrian because of his constant good humor. And the problem with this event, of course, is not so much the weight, but the sheer awkwardness of that hunk of tree. Hunt again seems to have no trouble with uh, that particular lift. Now it's Roger Ekstrom, the tall, military-looking, massively shouldered powerlifter from Sweden. He only just managed 110 kilos, so this extra weight could well prove too much. And indeed it does. Roger decides to uh, throw in the log, as it were. A similar fate befell Svenola Torsen, the bodybuilder from Sweden. So he and Roger share sixth place in this event. Franzi Beerbaum went out at his next lift. So Hamish Davidson, who's been the Scottish Highland Games champion six times since 1973, finds himself in the last four, and the weight is now 130 kilos. Jeff Capes is urging him on from the sidelines. Oh, no trouble at all there. I'm sure Hamish will be very pleased with that lift. I asked him how he felt he was doing in this particular competition. I was sort of struggling. I think I'm doing my limit now. A new event to me, so I think I'm doing not bad. Next to go at 130 kilos, the current title hold on their favorite again for this year, Jeff Capes. The big man from shot putting, six foot five tall, 300 pounds, four feet six around the chest, built in fat like the side of a house. He desperately wants to retain the title, of course, but he's suffering from a shoulder injury as a result of an earlier competition, so he's been playing down his chance of winning at these lifting events. But that shoulder clearly wasn't troubling him with uh, that particular lift. And here's the oldest competitor in the show. He celebrated his 45th birthday with the birth of a new son in January. Gerard Dupree in front of his home crowd. He's been around on the lifting scene a long time. He's been powerlifting champion of Holland 10 times in the last 17 years. And he's renowned for his technique. Rolls the log up onto his uh, chest. 
and then straight up over his shoulders. Again, really no trouble at all with that lift. Simon Wolfser is the other Dutchman in this competition, 30 years old, Dutch powerlifting champion for the past three years. He's also the lightest man in the competition at around 240 pounds, but he's fiercely competitive, very popular with this crowd in Amsterdam. He told me earlier this morning that he really wanted to bring this title home to his supporters here. Not it seems with this event, the 130 kilo log proves to be too much, and Simon goes out to take fourth place. So the extra weights have brought it on to bring it up to 135 kilos, and we have three strong men left to compete. The Dutchman Dupree, the Toulousman, Capes and Davidson. Hamish goes first. He's not a stranger to logs, of course. He tosses them round with a bannon at the Highland Games, but he has had trouble grappling with this particular log at the lower weights. That's the critical part of the lift, rolling it up onto the shoulders. But again, the 135 kilos proves to be too much because he couldn't straighten the arms. And that effort clearly took its toll of Hamish, he's having a lie down. I asked Jeff Capes earlier how he felt about this event. It's a very animalistic event. It's uh, no technique at all, just pure animal. Uh, but you have to think a little bit as well. You think it's heavy. And uh, then you start praying a little bit, you know, and just hope for the best. So a real chance of a win for Jeff in this event. I'm sure he'd like to take an early lead. Gets his concentration together. Rolls that log up onto his chest. Now for that critical straight arm push. Oh, but he's not going to make it. Going to have another go. He's lost it, lost it entirely there. Jeff, very, very close there. Yes. Unfortunately, the balance went back across the uh, center of balance where you push it and went past and went behind. And uh, I think that was my best shot. So that's the British pair out. And last to go is the 45-year-old Gerard Dupree. He's a great favorite with the crowd here. Great wall goes up as soon as he stands up. And there's a lot of the showman about him as he roars and grunts to uh, psych himself up. But then, of course, there's a lot of the circus about this kind of show, as well as brute strength. And Gerard could well win this event because he's clearly got the technique. Oh, so very close. He lets the log drop in disgust, but his wife is obviously very pleased, even if he appears not to be. But that was obviously a very good event for him. So after the first of the strength events, Gerard Dupree, Jeff Capes and Hamish Davidson are tied in first place with nine points each, followed closely by Simon Wolfser, the other Dutchman, and Franzi Beerbaum, the Austrian. Right, on to the second strength event in this competition, and this one looks so simple and straightforward, but it turns out to be a real killer. It's the battery lift, a standard lorry battery, weighs 70 pounds or five stone, about nine-year-old child's weight, but it can reduce these strong men to a state of exhaustion in something under a minute. It has to be held at arm's length, while the back remains firmly against a backboard, the arms mustn't bend, and the timing, because it's a timed event, stops as soon as the bottom of the battery touches a horizontal marker, but it really is a tough event. And this Dutch crowd, the hall is absolutely packed tight, clearly appreciate what these uh, men put themselves through. Again, the first man to go is Gino Bultink, the Belgian. He needs points, of course. He's trailing with three points at the bottom of the table, and this is his sort of event. I'm told it's a killer for the deltoid muscles that run over the shoulders, and of course, to some extent, it's the length of the lever, the length of the arm, that controls how well a competitor does. Because the longer the arm, the longer the lever that has to be supported with that dead weight of 70 pounds at the end of it. You see the pain barrier comes at about 25 seconds and Gino's fighting for those extra seconds. Uh, 32 seconds dead, it sets the target for the others, but it's a very good time. Jeff Capes, 
not a good event for him because he's got very long arms. He's also got that injured shoulder to contend with and he won't want to damage it further so early in the piece. This event is also, of course, a mind over matter event. The mind keeping the muscles at it when they're screaming for relief. So concentration, intense concentration is vital. You can see the pain coming on now. Arms just beginning to go. And there it goes. Jeff touches his right shoulder. Time, 25.7 seconds, not as good as Gino Bolting. Well, I've got a very bad injury in the shoulder. And uh, two injections already today. It's obviously uh, morally uh, demoralizing me, you know? But uh, there's always tomorrow. Probably a different frame of mind. So, 32 seconds of the time to beat now. It's Roger Ekstrom from Sweden, the epitome of the strong, silent type. Very doer, very quiet guy. He doesn't talk very much with his fellow competitors. Just sits there watching their performance. But he needs the points. He's lying equal sixth and he's very determined. Again, you can see the concentration there and the pain beginning to bite into those big shoulders. The crowd yelling him on. Oh, and there it goes. Oh, but a very good time. 33.6 seconds, putting him in the lead. He'll be very satisfied with that. Yes, I'm very satisfied. Did you train for it? No, I had never tried. I tried once. Not with a battery, only a weight. And now the shouts begin for Gerard Dupree, the showman. He's the man they want to see. Strides up that battery as if he's going to eat it. Grunts and snorts to psych himself up a bit. And the timing starts. Gerard, as you can see, has got short, muscular arms. This could well be his event. Just look at that concentration again. And this is, this is going to be a very good time. Wife in the audience shouts encouragement. And still he goes on. Oh, whole body beginning to shake as he fights for those extra seconds. And there it goes. Oh, but what a time. 42.3 seconds. The old man does it again. He's in the lead. Ten seconds up on Gino Bulting and surely unbeatable. Well, here is Holland's other favourite powerlifting son, Simon Wolfser. I'm sure if this audience could arrange a dead heat here, they'd be well pleased. But 42.3 seconds will be hard to beat. Simon's got a sports school in a place called Papendrecht, and there's a fair sprinkling of his pupils in the audience here wearing Simon Wolfser T-shirts. Shouts encouragement. 30 seconds now. And now the pain is there. And it's gone. The time, 36.3 seconds. So for the battery lift event, that puts Simon Wolfser in second place behind Gerard. So the old man has won two events in a row. Roger Ekstrom has slipped into third place. So at the end of the second event, Here's how the overall table looks. Gerard Dupree is out there in front, followed by his fellow Dutchman, Simon Wolfser. Jeff Kex is well placed, though, at number three. Now for the third event on this first day of pure strength events, the deadlift, and we're into very big money with this one. Two containers filled with several hundred kilos of Dutch guilders, to be precise. The competitors simply have to achieve a straight lift with the yoke. I say simply. But Jeff Capes here, attempting 320 kilos of silver, is in fact attempting to lift well over twice his own body weight. Jeff fixes his eyes on heaven, heaves, and makes it look easy. But that's as far as he goes, and uh, three others have already dropped out. And we pick it up now with Simon Wolfs attempting 370 kilos, but 800 pounds weight, 50,000 pounds of sterling. And this really ought to be his event because he's got all the powerlifting technique. And a little pressure there on his wife's face as he strides away. Now, Roger Ekstrom takes hold, still at 370 kilograms, hands outside the knees, overhand grip with both hands, strapped on, of course, for 
better grip. And just look at the effort on his face as he straightens and he's done it. And he gets uh, his well-merited applause. You know, Bultink's turn, even he, with his massive bulk, is lifting well over twice his own body weight, gets his hands strapped on, still in tracksuit bottoms and carpet slippers, would you believe? Gives it the gun. It looks as if he's not going to make it. And again. No. No, he decides he's had enough. So it's Hamish Davidson's turn, hungry for points after falling behind in the battery lift. So he needs the points, and so far it looks as if he likes this event. He says he likes the jingle of all that silver. Quick heave, and there it is. Oh, no trouble at all for Hamish. And he strides off with more bounce than ever. Another pause as yet more silver goes into the plastic containers to take it up to 380 kilos, just over uh, 835 pounds. Jeff Capes has fallen by the wayside, and now there are just three men left in this highly uh, moneyed event. Roger Ekstrom, Simon Wolf, Sir for Holland, and our own Hamish Davidson. So here's Roger Ekstrom, the big striding quiet Swede, the silent Swede, as his fellows have started to call him. Overhand grip uh, with both hands. Well strapped on, sets his feet close together. And here's the Hevo. But he's not going to move it. And he decides to bow out. But as he strides away, perhaps he feels he, he ought to have done better at this particular event. Roger, this is, this is really your event. Why don't you give it another go? Uh, it was too heavy. It's no idea to kill the kill myself just for a try. I think you've gone as far as you can go in this, this event. Uh, the last on 370, I, I, that was the, the last, I feel. So you're pleased with how you've done or not? Yeah, I'm pleased. But that retirement really places Hamish Davidson in a very strong position. And he's had really no trouble with the lifts in this event up to this weight. Jeff Capes is calling out, encouraging from the sidelines. Oh, so close, but he wasn't straight for two seconds, and Hamish also decides uh, to retire. Well, has he? Jeff is talking to him earnestly and no doubt encouraging him to have another go, now that he's so close to winning this event. Will he have another go? Looks as if he might. Now the crowd have joined in, encouraging him to go on. Indeed, he is going to give it another try. 835 pounds in weight to lift, and only Simon Wolfs are to beat. Come on, Hamish. 835 pounds is just uh, too much. I asked him if he was disappointed at getting so close. No, it's not really my event. I've never done it in training or anything else. It's a new event to me. So it's kind of a frightening sort of weight. You've got to watch what you're doing. I don't want to do my back in or anything. So uh, I think that's it. A frightening sort of a weight, an echo in a way of what Roger Ekstrom said. How close in these sorts of events do these men come to injuring themselves? But for Simon Wolfson, yet more gilders have gone into the container to raise it to a massive 860 pounds. Simon uh, passed on the last round, so he has to lift this weight to win the event outright. Hands well powdered, well strapped in. This is a powerlifting event. He should shift this weight. behind him. And you can see the anxiety on his wife's face. I wonder if he's regretting now having passed up that earlier round and with it the chance to win this event outright. Need extra points of course for him. No, he's retiring. He just can't shift it. So, Simon Wolfser, Roger Ekstrom and Hamish share first place. A disappointing performance a bit for Jeff Capes, but this is essentially the sort of result you'd expect in, uh, in these powerlifting events. Let's see what effect that has on the overall scoreboard. After three events, the two Dutchmen are still in the lead. Hamish is 
well placed at third with 22 points and Jeff Capes is now back in fifth place with 19. Right, onto the bar bending, an extraordinary event for my money when the strength of the cranium seems to play as important a part as the power of those biceps. This is 14 millimeter diameter bar. All the lengths are 120 centimeters long. That's uh, 48 inches. And they have to be bent double so that they'll pass through the test frame. It's an elimination event. The diameter of the bar is increased steadily to a maximum of 17 millimeters. Well, they all cope pretty easily with the 14 millimeter bar. Much to the enjoyment, obviously, of the crowd here. Now it's on to the 16 millimeter bar, this time 54 inches long. The critical rule in this event is that the competitor can wrap the bar around his neck or his head or even his chest, but he must keep his hands and forearms away from his body. He can't, that is, lever his elbows against his body. It's all got to be brute strength. And you can see what that means written on their faces. is clearly not something to tangle with lightly. But this event, in a way, epitomizes the atmosphere, if you like, the nature of the whole competition. It's a strange blend of athleticism, Victorian strongman, and fairground sideshow. But there's no doubt these men are really giving it all they've got. Well, Simon Wilshire is the only man to make the hairpin. So he's clearly emerging as a very strong contender for this European title. Doing very well up to go, Hamish. Trouble yeah. with the 60-millimeter bar. Yeah, after a bit of a disaster with the battery, um, I was still a bit cautious with this injury in the shoulder. But it didn't seem to bother the bar. That's about all I can do. It's so you only... incredibly difficult to bend that stuff, though. Yeah, it is. I don't know what the secret is. Uh, Jeff seems to have it anyway with the longer levers. The longer the arms, the greater the leverage on the ends of the bar, of course. And once again, the experienced men go through their preparations, winding on the towels, prior to winding these bars over their heads. <coughs> now, Jeff argues that the faster you can get the bend going, the more the heat softens the metal. So it's all got to be over, in his view, in the first few seconds, if you're going to get that bar into a hairpin. At least that's the theory. But just look at the agony on those faces as they apply all the power they've got, but still that bar refuses to bend. It's a desperate event. Who want to bend steel for a living? Even Jeff there is, uh, is having real trouble. There's obviously a lot of spring in that bar. Just look at those shoulders applying the power. <laughs> Jeff looks close. Franzi Beerbaum, the laughing Austrian, but he really has scarcely moved the bar at all. Gino, 360 pounds. Well, it looks as if Jeff has done it again at the risk of throttling himself. He really looks in some pain there. <laughs> well, none of the others have managed to complete the bend. That means that runners-up position will be determined by measuring the distance between the ends of the bar. It does look as if Jeff Capes uh, has hurt himself. Jeff, a lot of, lot of pain at the end, couldn't breathe? Well, the thing is, uh, I had a lot of spring in it, which I, which I feared. And uh, got it down then, it sprung out again. Down and sprung out. So I went in and held it. But you seem to have a very nice technique going, starting the bend on your head, then going around the neck and whipping it in. Sure, I went too soon though. And I had a little bit of difficulty. Um, does the speed of the bend help because of the heat of the metal or not? Very much, very much. You must, you must warm it up very fast. And uh, I stopped and I thought, oh no. Mechanics of the event went through my head and said I blew it. But uh, I'm very happy that... Uh, what was, the, what was the choking at the end? What was well, the end? I just shut off my clock, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> you know, that stops you breathing. <laughs> 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 
right, the bars are being prepared for a bend-off between these two men who look as if they could end up by fighting it out for this title. <laughs> but what did Jeff Capes think about the kind of competition he's getting from this Dutchman, Simon Wolfson? He's impressing me all the way because he's very much the lighter man. And um, I think uh, he's shook everybody, I mean, including me. He's just really impressing me in everything he does. 17 millimeter bar, so an even stiffer test wow. if that isn't some sort of a pun. 54 inches long. And right at the start there, Jeff has achieved a massive bend. Look for them as if it's all over right at the beginning. Simon struggling. But Jeff has laid his bar down. Obviously he's going to gamble at that initial bend will win the event for him. Simon Wolfs is struggling on all that power. But now he's swung the bar down too. It looks like it's all over. It looks in fact as if Simon Wolfs is in some pain with that forearm. Jeff comes up to commiserate with him. But that was clearly a very good event for him. His second win, Roger Ekstrom has a very good third place while Hamish Davidson is hanging in there with fifth place. Jeff, a very good win there, your second, you've tied in the first event, win here. You've got a very good record in bar bending, of course, haven't you? Yes, I've got a 100% record in uh, world, European and British competition, and uh, I kind of uh, very much enjoy the event, mainly because I win at it, and uh, I was getting a little bit worried there um, because I'm not placing very well. And obviously, I've, I've really got to catch up now very quickly, or else I'll be too far behind for tomorrow. So, at the end of day one, Simon Wolfson is a popular leader, and Jeff is very well placed to make his challenge tomorrow. But Roger Ekstrom, the silent Swede, he's plugged away to take second position. Did he find it tough going? Yes, it's tougher than I, had, uh, than I expected. Who, if you had to put your money on it, would you see amongst these competitors as being the toughest contender? It's difficult to say. Before this competition, I had to set my money on Jeff Capes, but I don't know now. Because Simone Wolfser is obviously a very, very tough contender. Yes. Yeah. What are you looking forward to, or what are you not looking forward to tomorrow? <laughs> I'm looking forward to everything. You are? Especially the truck race. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. Well, here we are on the second day of the contest. Many of the competitors went off to bed last night complaining of minor aches and strains and falls and so on. Now they wake up this morning knowing they've been in a real fight. Jeff Capes, I know, is worried about that shoulder. He had two pain-killing injections yesterday. Hamish Davidson is worried about his fitness for that all-important beer barrel race. And Spinola Torsen, the Dane, very disappointed in yesterday's performance, very keen to do well today. So how do the men feel about their chances in today's events? I should feel OK in this track pool because I've done it before a few times. Um, Cumberland wrestling, I don't know. That might even bother the shoulder slightly. And the milk churn, I have no idea. That's a wild card, isn't it? Yeah. Best of luck, Hamish, anyway. Right Thank you very up. much. I feel a uh, good spirit and uh, I, will do, I will do twice as good today, I'm sure. Worried about the truck pull? No. You're not? No. You've got plenty of weight, of course, haven't you? Excuse me? You've got plenty of weight to, to get Yeah, also at home, I've been uh, make, make a record with, uh, thank you, with, with a train, a train wagon, and th this train wagon was uh, uh, almost uh, 36 ton. So, uh, 36 ton? Yeah. And you could pull it? I could pull it, yeah, yeah. Think you've got a good chance of winning, Jeff? Uh, I don't know. I, I obviously, as you say, I'm uh, fairly well placed, but at the same point, uh, uh, I'm still fairly optimistic about the outcome, and uh, obviously I want to do well. Who uh, do you fear the most? Everybody. So, a five-point gap between the leader, Simon Wolfser, and the title holder and favourite, Jeff Capes. Will he be able to make that gap up in the four remaining events? And we start today with a real he-man's event, the truck pull. These trucks are every bit as large as they look. They weigh seven and a half tonnes. They have to be towed over a track 80 feet long. And it's a time event. The fastest man wins. And in his first heat, we've got Svenola Torsten, the Dane, and Franzi Birbaum, the Austrian, nearest the camera. Today's events, the so-called dynamic events, really favour a man like Spinola with his speed and fitness. But Franzi Birbaum is a tough competitor, as they all are, of course. 
Well, this is what it looks like to have seven and a half tons hanging around your neck. And at the moment, Franz Birbaum is ahead by just about that amount, by a neck. The crowd is yelling them on. I'm told the technique is to lie as flat as possible and take short steps rather than long ones. Franz is definitely pulling away. Spinola is straining, straining to catch up. He's not quite, and they both dive for the line like sprinters. A great finish. Franz is obviously delighted with his performance. 49 seconds dead. Spinola Torsen is given 50.03, uh, so a very close finish. And Franz makes use of the oxygen bottles by the finishing line. Because, of course, this is a very tough event in terms of putting up the heart rate and the pulse rate. These men very quickly run into oxygen debt. And this second heat, we've got Gerard Dupree, the crowd's favourite, against 350 pounds of Belgian flesh. Body mass is, of course, important in this event to get that truck moving. But how fit is Gino Bolting, I wonder? Will he last the course? Well, Gino's off to a great start, striding forward. Nice short steps, really moving that truck. But Gerard is pacing him, he's stuck ahead. Both of them clawing at the air to get some momentum going. They're that hearts pounding away like steam hammers. Well, neck and neck as they come to the finish. Gino just a fraction ahead. Well, the clock said he was by a second. 40.03 seconds to Gerard Dupree's 41.3 seconds. But what an amazing effort by a man of 45. Little wonder he needs a quick burst from the oxygen bottle. Now, in this third heat, we've got Hamish Davison, who's very happy about yesterday's work, and Jeff Capes, who has a very good record in this event and must hope to win it. And Jeff is making full use of that 300-odd pounds of his, weight right forward, knuckles trailing on the ground in uh, guerrilla style, if you like. Lots and lots of power in those legs, driving him forward. But Hamish also has a very good style. Jeff's obviously been giving him tips, very low down. But Jeff has opened up an enormous lead, clear win there, and the times were excellent. 33.5 for Jeff Capes and 39.4 seconds for Hamish, which puts him in second place in this event. Hamish, great position there, well forward, low down, knuckles on the ground. Yeah. It looked very good. Well, I went through the motion, you'd say. Well, you but I wasn't as fast as I could have done it, I suppose. Well, I think you... Did you not do better than you thought you might do this morning? Um, it's difficult to say. I thought I'd do quite well in it anyway, but I, I did think Jeff would win it. He's got the weight and he's got the athletic ability and speed and endurance. Jeff, very fast time there. Pleased with the result? Yeah, up to the present time, yes, but there's two other competitors yet, and uh, I'm always aware of dark horses and unknowns, and uh, the Swedish guy's never pulled a truck before, so that is an unknown quantity and probably a danger because he's a big man. But uh, I showed my hand a little bit, and he's seen my style a style that's done very well, and uh, he could probably copy it, which is a danger to me. But you need points from this to start pulling back on Simon, don't you? I need a lot of points, a lot of points. So, the final heat, Simon Wolfser, the man in the lead, and Roger Ekstrom beat Swedish Dark Horse. Can either of them beat 33.5 seconds? Ekstrom clearly modelling himself on Jeff Capes' style, weight well forward, palming himself along the ground. Simon Wolfs upright, swinging rhythmically, but he's the lightest man in the competition, remember. Roger has now opened up a lead of several yards and he's pulling away. And this, of course, is the man who's never done this event before. But is he going to be fast enough to beat Jeff Capes? Simon falls on the line to uh, get the touch and the times are Roger Ekstrom 42.4 seconds Simon Wolfser 46.3 Simon gets a commiserating hug from his trainer there while Roger makes use of the oxygen bottle 
So, a clear result for this event. First, Jeff Capes. Second, Hamish Davidson. Gino Bultink, third. And Gerard Dupri, a good fourth. And what effect has that had on the overall table? Well, as far as the competition is concerned, there could hardly have been a better result. The deficit's been wiped out. The stage is now set for a battle royal between Simon Wolfson and Jeff Capes over the remaining three events. So here it is, the beer barrel race, in many ways the toughest event in the competition, the event in which the competitors, in Jeff Capes' words, run into that wall of lack of breath and lack of oxygen. Ten barrels full, 155 pounds, very, very heavy indeed. The competitors have to lift them, stagger in the best way they can, ten feet to the tailboard of this truck, which is five feet high, so it's as high as uh, Hamish Davidson's and uh, Gerard Dupree's chin. They have to heave those barrels up onto the tail of the truck, and obviously in every way, no rhythm possible, lifting and staggering and heaving. In every way, a killer event. Junior Bultink, who could have fitness problems carrying that bulk, as well as the barrels, and Gerard Dupree, very fit and muscular, but getting on in years. They're off. A timed event, this one, like the truck pull. It's the 10 feet between the barrels and the trucks. That's the real killer in this event. It's those 10 feet that saps the strength and takes away the legs. The crowd has gone wild, shouting these men on. Just look at Gerard go. He's hurling those barrels into the back of the truck. He's already onto his second stack. Virginia's having trouble. 360 pound men don't run very fast. coming up for his last barrel, but look, look how much he's slowed down, he's really all in. It's a very, very tough event, this one. No place, as I said earlier, for 19 stone weaklings. And there it goes, Gerard's time, 73.4 seconds. Gino's last barrel, while well, Gerard has a go at the oxygen mask. But it's exhausting just to watch these men. While these two sitting on the sidelines have been drawn together in the last heat, the winner could well win the title. For now, it's the Great Dane, I've been dying to say that. Spinola Torsen on the left, and Franzi Birbaum, the laughing Austrian, on the right. Spinola is really so keen to do well, but until now, he's lacked the, the anger, the killer instinct that might give him the edge. But not now. He's literally hurling those barrels into the back of the truck. They've both gone notice for the shoulder technique. They're hurling those barrels about as if they were empty, and they're very, very heavy. They're slowing down, noticed, and here's the point where they hit that wall of oxygen deficiency. You can see even Spinola, as fit as he is, has slowed down. They're both beginning to stagger a bit. But Spinola is clearly ahead by at least a barrel, and here he goes for the last time. And he's won in a very good time indeed, 73 seconds. Francie struggles on. And there's his time, 83.3 seconds. The turn of the tide, perhaps, for Svenola. Sven, obviously, determined to give that one the real gun. I try to do my best here, as I've been doing all, all, all the events. But you really put your back into that one, yeah. and you were running to, from, the, from the truck to the barrels. I'm getting angry. Because I think I'm being too quiet in the other events. Too nice. That's my style. And now we've got Roger Ekstrom, who's done so well in this competition against Hamish Davidson, who really doesn't rate his chances very highly because he's short and he's going to have trouble getting the barrels up into the truck. of these men notice is uh, taking the barrel to the shoulder they're carrying them on the chest Roger of course is a great height advantage and massive shoulders Hamish is short doesn't train much and likes the odd pint by all the odds Roger should win but there's the wall just look at that strength gone wind gone and here on it's all agony all the way and Hamish has somehow defied all the odds. This is his last barrel. He's going to win. Time, 79.1 seconds. Incredible. That's Roger's last barrel. 
Roger Ekstrom's time, 82.4 seconds, and he's totally exhausted. Hamish, how you managed that after all that beer and cigars last night, I'll never know. But I mean, you did very, very well. I don't know what the time was, but I just thought I, thought I was doing very badly at the start of it. And then I noticed the two barrels the guy had left. And I thought I could do it, I just speeded that with the last two. In fact, you overtook him in the last three barrels. Yeah. He was ahead of you, a barrel ahead yeah. of you, and you were in the last three barrels. Yeah. But, uh, but better than you expected? Possibly, yeah, we'll wait and see what the time is. It's a killer, though. There's easier ways to make a living. <laughs> but this is the really big match, possibly even the decider of this competition. Simon Wolf, sir, against Jeff Capes. They're equal on points, they both have a real fire in the belly to win. They're both going at it like tigers, hurling themselves at the barrels, crashing those barrels into the back of the truck. They really mean it, both of them. No mucking around, no holds barred. The crowd has gone wild. <laughs> Simon Wolfson is just ahead. He's now onto his second file. Oh, Jeff half dropped that one. Looks, looks as if he's torn his hand. He's driving himself on. Simon Wilson now touching his forearm in pain, but he's clearly ahead, coming up to his last barrel. There it is. He's obviously won. This is Jeff's last barrel. And they're both absolutely exhausted and both doubled up in pain. Simon Wolfson's time was 53.5 seconds, 20 seconds faster than anyone else. And Jeff Capes is clearly in trouble with that thumb. I thought it bent right over, out of the joint. Ah! Yeah. Oh! Uh, I couldn't believe my thumb coming out of the joint. Real, real, a real needle developing there between you two, Jeff, yes? Well, it's good for the competition. Feel the needle? Yeah. You went at it like tigers on in those barrels. <laughs> well, I wanted to be him, and he wanted to be me. <laughs> so, the result of that terrifying event, another win for Simon Wolf, sir. Spinola Torsen getting a good third, his best result so far, and Hamish Davison keeping his hopes alive with that fifth position. Now, if we translate that into the overall result, Simon Wolf, sir, has edged into the lead by one point. Can Jeff overtake him in the two events remaining? Perhaps just as important from what we saw in the last event, is this sort of competition disciplined enough? Is it perhaps too dangerous? Not to place one of two medical doctors working on this competition. What kind of uh, injuries have there been? Uh, mostly it's uh, an injury of the muscles and the tendons. And uh, yeah, that's the main thing. And some bruises, but that's not very seriously. So it's mostly the muscles. Any specific competitor who's had a, a serious injury? Uh, we have two with serious injuries of the tendons in the elbow and because oh, you've seen the game so you know what's going on uh, and who are they simon wilson is it simon wilson and uh what's the other sven uh torsen sven spinola spinola torsen yes he hurt his forearm didn't he in the in the, in the log in lift, the log lift straight yeah. away at the very beginning yes and that that was a, a tough thing to do what about jeff cape's thumb oh he has a distortion of the thumb which i think it will not be no problem in the next events what about what's happening to the inner man? Things like uh, uh, heart rate, for example, when they're pulling the trucks or on the, on the beer barrel race. I mean, the, the heart rate must go through the roof. Yes, I think it's about, I, I never measured it uh, during these games, but I think it's uh, 170. That's dangerous? No, it isn't, no. So, no danger, but no shortage of competition either. This is perhaps the wild card in the competition, the Dutch beam race. Basically a slalom race with the runners carrying two 220-pound milk churns on a yoke. Here we've got Svenola Torsen against Franz Beerbaum, and nobody's quite sure what will happen because they've never seen the event before. The churns must be on the ground at the start. And they're off. There are five penalty points if you knock over a pole or if you knock over your opponent. So it's speed with caution. So Franz is already edging into the lead, and he clatters across the line to finish just in front. The time, 21.7 seconds from France, 22.4 from Spinola. He must be disappointed. Franz can't restrain himself. He wants to do a lap of honor. 
In fact, on this second day, a, a real camaraderie has developed among the competitors. Not, of course, that that takes the edge off the competition they all want to win. Now, in this heat, we've got Roger Ekstrom against the big Belgian Gino Bultink. Roger should win because Gino will be carrying over 800 pounds, which is a lot to carry on any 80-foot dash, which is the length of this course. Roger seems to be having a certain amount of trouble negotiating these posts, but Gino is really gliding along, the neck and neck. No, Gino's edged in front, and he literally hurls himself there across the finishing line to win by a churn or two. Times Gino, 22.9, Roger, 23.4. Now it's that canny old campaigner, Gerard Dupree, and the doer Scott, Hamish Davidson. There's a needle match developing between these two for third place. They're both the same sort of height and build, both very gritty customers. They're off, and rumour has it that Gerard Dupree has been practising this event, the only competitor to do so, but he hasn't revealed any times. Well, if he has practised, he's not helping very much. In fact, I think Hamish is hit slightly, and as they come to that last 18-foot dash, he just forges ahead. There it is. So Gerard, the local favourite, really squeezed out here. And a good win for Hamish to give him an extra point. Now, here we go again with the great battle for this title between Jeff Capes and Simon Wolfser. Both completely different physiques and styles. Simon Wolfser perhaps has the advantage here because he's short and athletic. Jeff Capes has all those long levers to move around, and of course, the taller he is, the more pendulum effect he's going to get with the milk churns. Whoops, if that goes down, he gets a five-point penalty, but it doesn't. He's just ahead and going very well now. Simon's in trouble, he seems to be hobbling. Oh, a very fast time for Jeff here. 19.7 seconds, Wolf's time. 22.4, and that could be a costly loss for him. All the competitors are looking a little weary now, but Jeff Capes is on a real high. As you say, he took the bit between my teeth. Knew it was very, very important that I did very well. You couldn't go down another point on that event, could well, you? Well, I was hoping, as I said, to finish, but with a fast time without falling over. And when I started hitting the, Once, the post, I thought, oh, here we go, you know. But uh, apparently I did something like 17 seconds. 19, 19, 19 seconds, 19, 19 seconds. Which, 20, 21. Which puts you two seconds ahead of the Franzi Bierbaum. Oh dear, so I'm glad I didn't hit any down. Sure. So, another win for Jeff Capes there. Franz Bierbaum and Svenella Torsen both did well. But this event has radically changed the overall competition table. Capes is now in the lead for the first time in the competition, one and a half points ahead of Wolfser, but 11 points ahead of Hamish Davidson lying third. So it's a real fight to the finish between these two. Only Wolfser can catch Capes. And they both know precisely what they've got to do to win the title of the strongest man in Europe. But Jeff should have a real advantage in this last event, Cumberland Wrestling, because in this type of wrestling, the biggest man should always win two competitors hook their hands together behind each other's back and if their grip is broken or if any part of the body other than the feet of course touches the mat the other man wins in the first bouts Franz beat Gino Bultink and Roger Ekstrom beat Spinola Torsen now it's Simon Wolfser to fight Gerard Dupree an old Dutch bout but does he feel perhaps here as he moves onto the mat that perhaps his chances slipped away both men have similar height and build and similar amounts of inexperience. Neither of them has done much of this Cumberland wrestling before, hence their hesitation in getting to grips with each other. The referee tells them how to do it. The chin on the opponent's right shoulder, then left arm over right and right over left, then hands clasped together behind the back. And then it's every man for himself. Clear an instant win for Simon Wolfser over his compatriot because if both men fall, a man on top wins. Although the crowd may not know much about this ancient Highland sport, but they obviously like to see these big men get into grips with each other. 
Now, in this bout, still in the first round, we've got two really big men on the mat, Spinola Torsen and Jeff Capes, and up to 41 stone of muscle and bone. Jeff has got all kilted up for the part, and he's been having a few lessons as well. Notice how low he crouches, forcing his opponent down. Legs straddled wide. And just look how he applies all that strength to lift his opponent right off his feet. It's all over in a few seconds. A really decisive win for Jeff Capes. He's certainly looking really very confident now. He knows his weight around the Cumberland wrestling mat. And this Dutch crowd as well is getting behind him. So, on into the semi-finals now. It's the cheerful Austrian to fight Simon Wolfser. The Austrian's a much bigger man, but Wolfson must win if he is to keep his challenge alive. Oh, but once again, height and weight are taking over. Beerbaum is literally spinning his opponent round. Down, and it's all over. All over for Simon Wolfson's challenge as well. Jeff Capes is now bound to win. Simon Wolfson must know that. And so too, of course, do the crowd here. Now, two more very big men in the second semi-final, Jeff Capes against Roger Ekstrom, who's never tried Cumberland wrestling before today, so he's going to have to rely on his height and those massive shoulders of his. Jeff again takes that very low, very low stance, very wide straddle legs to give him greater stability. Very deliberate about getting that grip tight. Remember, if it's broken, he loses the bout. Roger is down and Jeff thumps the mat in triumph. Clearly his experience is telling there's no one left as big as Roger to fight again. In fact, it looks as if Roger Ekstrom is badly winded on the mat there from that 300 odd pounds dropped suddenly onto his cellar plexus. He looks okay. Indeed he has to be because he now has to fight Simon Wolfser for third and fourth place at this event. Roger, clearly the bigger man here, of course, a very big advantage. And has he picked up any tips from his last fight? Oh, and there's no way that the shorter Wolfson can resist that extra height and weight. He's lifted right off his feet and dumped on the mat. So Roger takes third place in the event, and Wolfson fourth. And although all the competitors are now clearly very tired, you can see the very strong sporting spirit that's developed between them. And as for Simon, well, he's the smallest man in the competition, but he's really pushed Jeff Capes all the way. So now, all that remains is to decide first and second places in the wrestling. Can Jeff Capes become the first man to win five events in this competition? Andy Beerbaum, the competitor. And really, there's no holding Jeff. He's really all fired up. Down, Beerbaum goes. Jeff has done it, five firsts out of eight events. What a way to retain the title. And the crowd there, right behind him, gives him all the applause he deserves. Although he's beaten, of course, both their local champions, they've really given him a lot of support all day. That looked very tough out there on the mat, Jeff. Yes, quite an exercise. Um... <laughs> I'd, well, I mean, I've got this theory. If I start thinking about what I'm going to do and the, the degree of difficulty in the events, there's no way you can actually go out there, you know. But what about the overall competition? Five firsts, including your tie. Five firsts out of eight. Not bad? Yeah. They were all saying last night that tomorrow was my day. Uh, with that, uh, the churn thing, uh, which is an unknown factor, obviously I was very happy to win it, but... Uh, I was hoping to do fairly well in, in uh, the lorry. Um, but when every season or every new event, there's a new set of guys. They know me, but I don't know them. Five firsts out of eight, you've got to be very pleased with that. Very pleased indeed, and uh, uh, happy that I'm bringing the European strongest man back to England. Congratulations. Thank you. So there it is, Jeff Capes really putting his stamp on this title, a great win after two days of what must have ranked as some of the toughest competitions he's ever been through. Simon Wolfson fighting right through to the end in the second place. 
Roger Ekstrom, the quiet but persistently competitive Swede, inching into third place, and Hamish Davidson doing credit to his native Scotland with fourth place. So, as we say goodnight from Amsterdam, Jeff will now go off to take part in the competition to find the world's strongest man to be held in America at Magic Mountain in California.